Fight Fight fans, welcome to Triple THS. I'm the Patrick Starfish of MMA, Tommy Toehold. Today, Couture turns coat, Silva talks insanity, Clay celebrates both January, Luke throws flying knees, Nick plays nice. What's the viewer comment of the week? Let's do this shit! It's a mustache kind of morning, Fight fans. Dana and company took their show to forever sunny Chicago for a free card that features all kinds of insanity. Say that it started with Ron Jeremy jumping around like some goddamn flubber. Lionel Richie won a controversial decision over Hatsu Aoki with the fan favorite weekend at Bernie strategy of laying lifelessly on his opponent. Once a must-watch contender, Jake the Snake is rapidly becoming the piss break fighter of the night. So I thought I'd invite him to come and give his side of things. And normally when Clay stops by the show, I can't get him to stand still long enough to answer a question. So I've decided to do something about it. And I assure you, Clay's going nowhere for this interview. First question, Clay, what's up with the mustache? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Never mind, moving on. Eric Koch style hopes for squash via an elbow that turned his skull into a hot dog left in the microwave too long. Anthony Pettis did all kinds of crazy shit in his win over the cowboy, like a cartwheel kick, a flying knee off the cage, the Shuryoken, three flying go-go platas, and a liver kick that would make Boss root and spill his bud diesel on an unsuspecting bar patron, instigating a fight, and forcing Boss to create space, grab a chair, and stab him with his own knife. Pettis' win even impressed the boss, and it looks like we could finally see Showtime get the title shot he deserved seven Frankie Edgar rematches ago. B.A. Baracus made his final stand in the UFC Saturday night, getting his dick kicked in by Glover to share for three rounds, which I believe makes Glover the UFC welterweight champion, winner of Tough 18, and rightful heir of his seal door. Afterward, instead of a farewell interview for the former champ and pride legend, UFC fans were treated to another commercial for Metro PCS, a company whose entire purpose is still a giant fucking mystery to me. You didn't have any FaceTime after the fight. Is there anything you want to say? Fuck you, Tommy. Well put. Last but not least, the Flyweights had a 25 minute battle for control of Smurf Village. Despite a slow start, Johnson was able to get his shit together for the championship rounds and pull out the decision win. With a good showing by Dotson and a controversial illegal knee, there's a good chance that we'll see these two lightning fast hobbits go at it again. E2 ran day. The man who helped make the UFC into a 15 bajillion dollar juggernaut is taking his talents to South Beach. Er, Bellator. That's right, Fight fans. UFC Hall of Famer, MMA legend, and the hero to every balding guy who ever wanted to be a badass, Randy Couture, has signed a deal with Bellator according to SI. Don't get your lube out just yet there, fanboys. The natural ain't heading to the competition for fisticuffs. He's got coaching duty on Bellator's new reality show that's totally not going to be like the Ultimate Fighter, even though it involves fighters in some sort of reality show, and has coaches, apparently, and Randy Couture's in the first season, and it's on Spike. Anyway, Spike's going to have a big fuck you Dana Presser on February 5th, so I'll be sure to give you more on the Not the Ultimate Fighter show next week. 2008 was a great year. Finally got a chance to bash hookers with baseball bats in glorious HD, Heath Ledger was shoving pencils into people's eyes from beyond the grave, and Kung Lee was the middleweight champion of an organization you probably don't remember called Strike Force. Well, apparently Ed Soares loves him some GTA 4, because in an interview with Cage Fanatic last week, he said the spider Go would be interested in fighting Kung Lee next. That's right, not Chris Weidman, Weidman, Wedman, not George St. Pierre, not John Jones, and certainly not Vitor Cheese it's Belfort. Now, to his credit, Kung Lee's coming off back-to-back -back wins against top contenders. And he's still several years away from becoming a member of the AARP. When Ariel asked the action star what he thought, his response, and I'm paraphrasing, was fuck yeah. Ed, what the fuck are you guys doing? What? We won Kung Lee. Oh, come on. He's a legitimate name and- I mean, I'm not gonna accuse the champ of ducking people, but that fight is way off. Okay, okay, you're right. We want to rematch Chris Lieben. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Give me a serious fight. What? You act like it's going to matter who we fight next. Chris Weedman, Luke Rockhold, Santa Claus. Whoever it is, they're going to get their dick kicked in. Well, if you don't care, then why are you even commenting on this? Anderson likes fucking with Dana. Been awfully quiet back there. You got anything to say today? Mm, no heart to... What do you say, Ed? No clue. Sometimes he just makes noises. Spoiler alert! Here's what you missed on The Ultimate Fighter last night. The episode focused on Double XL Roy Jones Jr. and some of his Team Jones counterparts as they doubted the decision to have Jr. take on Team Dark Size number one, Luke Barnett. Gil said he felt like he was ambushed by his teammates, but that actually came later when Luke Barnett's knee ambushed his face, finishing the fight in the second round. With the win, Shell P took control of the matchups, and it looks like we're gonna finally get to see Uriah Hall in action when he takes on Adam Sella. Preview showed everyone's reaction to what is apparently the most brutal knockout in the history of people being knocked out by shit. Dana's been hinting at an ultimate warrior figure face smashing everybody and sending them to the hospital and it looks like one of those two dudes might be Uriah Hall or Adam Sella so tune in next Tuesday to see Uriah Hall almost kill that white guy last but not least story that broke last Wednesday because fuck me right and a turn that can only be described as Michael Myers helping Jamie Lee Curtis babysit the kids Nick Diaz was scheduled to appear at a press event in Montreal for his upcoming fight with Jean-Claude Van Damme and he actually fucking showed up not only that but he was in a good mood only had nice things to say about GSP and was friendly and open with the media on hand whether this is part of some larger strategy to make GSP let his guard down or the result of a bad batch of spinach salad, it was most definitely out of character for the pride of Stockton. What's the deal, Nick? Turn a new leaf. Time to start focusing on becoming a better person and really taking responsibility for my actions. Wow, Nick, I'm glad to hear you finally- What the fuck? Two Nicks? What's going on here? What the fuck I wanna know, homie? Nick Diaz don't act like no soft-ass, media-friendly bitch. What? Why you trying to beat me in Montreal, homie? Why don't you take that mask off and show us who you really are or whatever? Kenny Florian? But why? Yeah, what? 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 
I got it, Nick, relax. Why impersonate Nick Diaz? This main event means everything to the UFC, and I knew Nick wouldn't show for the presser, so I took it upon myself to show up in his place. Wow, I guess that explains why Nick seems so not so fast. That's not Kenny Florian. Rory McDonald? I mean, Kenny Florian. Whoa, I'm the real Kenny Florian. This man's an imposter. Reveal yourself. Matt Hughes! It's true, Tommy. I never wanted to retire, so I faked being Nick Diaz in order to get another shot at my welterweight title. But wouldn't the real Nick have said something? And why did you pretend to be Kenny Florian just now? No, Bob Sapp. Me too. Just kidding, it's still me. What the fuck just happened? Your comment time! Each week I ask you to take to the comment section of social media to tell me how you really feel about the show. Then I pick the comment with the least grammatical errors. This week's winner comes to us from at chadneil89 on Twitter who said, Favorite as many tweets as you'd like, Timmy. These bashings will continue like TRT and MMA until one of two things happens. I mentioned on Triple THS, or I'm viewing your odd-shaped head by nine. Because we both know only one of those is a real option. I better hear my name mentioned early Thursday, Toby. Kaboom! I've taught you well, young Padawan. That's show, Fight Fans! Tune in next Wednesday when I reenact Home Alone 2 with the cast of Tough Brazil. Till then, follow me on Twitter for live tweets in my morning routine. Like me on Facebook for clues of the whereabouts of Carmen San Diego. Check out my YouTube channel for past shows and bonus content. Be sure to visit all my awesome friends who are related to our founding fathers. Remember Triple THS, I'm Tommy Toehold. Welcome to Earth.